Hey guys, this is Mommy Beluga Investing. Hi there, back again with me Rati in Mommy Beluga Investing. In this video, I'm going to analyze posted Singapore Limited with the stock symbol F9D. This uh, is one of uh, among many analysis requested by this, this channel viewers in August this year. Okay, after looking at the numbers, my quick take for this company are, okay, the first one is that it is pretty old company, a pretty old company that constantly transforms itself to stay relevant. For now, unfortunately, I'm not interested in making any position in this company. Okay, how did I reach the above conclusion? Follow my video as I quickly discuss the company's profile, EPS, dividend, and other numbers. Please consider to subscribe because it means a lot for a beginning YouTuber like me. If you have any comments or input, do not hesitate to put it in the comment section. It will probably help me to get more perspective and learn more. Okay, before getting into the data, I read out the disclaimer first. Disclaimer, this is an amateur video. My main intention is to record my journey, learning and practicing investing from scratch. Over time, you may find that some inconsistencies in my analysis and conclusion. Please bear with me. My analysis is limited to the public data that I can access and the scope of my knowledge. Both of those change over time. This video shouldn't replace any financial advice and neither suggestion to take a position, buy or sell in the stock market. Please conduct your own research before making any decision. But if you do your own research, I hope this video could be useful somehow. Okay, now let's start from a brief company's profile. Okay, Boasted Singapore is established as one of the split of the original Boasted & Co. that itself established in 18. 28 okay it it has been listed in singapore sgx main index since 17 october 1975 with stock symbol f9d it was mostly boasted singapore's business was mostly marketing and distribution of consumer good over time it developed engineering divisions sold out new markets for its design and project management services Major restructuring happened since 1996, where Wong Fong Fui, okay, I hope that I pronounced the name correctly, apologies if I don't, the current company's executive chairman bought over Boasted Singapore. Since then, the company focused its core operations on infrastructure-related engineering services and geospatial technology. Currently, the company operates four business divisions. The first one is the Energy Engineering Division, which provides solutions to the global oil and gas, petrochemical and energy industries. The only thing that I found interesting for this business segment is their Waste Heat Recovery Unit, in short, WHRUS. It is basically captured thermal energy from high temperature turbine exhaust and flue gases. From there, the heat then transferred for uh, use by other utilities, thus reducing the overall energy demand of plants and potentially doubling the operational efficiency of gas-fired turbines. Okay, uh, Daddy Bluga, my husband, had spoken several times with me if we can somehow recapture heat exhausted from our fridge and aircon to be used to heat our shower, for example. Okay, and then the second division is the Real Estate Division under Boasted Projects Limited. This division provides innovative real estate solutions such as custom-built smart eco-sustainability and future-ready business park and industrial developments. The real estate solution aims to simultaneously minimize emissions and resource wastage. Yeah. The third division is Geospatial Division. It provides professional services and exclusive distributes of ESRI ArcGIS technology. Okay, I'm not familiar with this uh, technology, yeah, but from quick web search, it seems to be the world's leading geographic information system, hence this short form of GIS or GIS. So I guess it's kind of mapping software that you can add multiple extra layers of information. Sounds like Google Map perhaps to me okay okay let's move on yeah the fourth division is the healthcare division this division provides innovative medical solutions that address niche area of age related chronic diseases and mobility issues across the continuum of long-term care 
It is currently focused on rehabilitative care and sports science in the Asia Pacific. Pretty niche solution from the look of it, yeah? Yeah, from the 2021 annual report, the company's chairman, yeah, uh, hold 42.52% of the company share. He seems to be holding it via multiple custodian account listed in the 20 largest shareholder because we, I don't think we can see his name in the 20 largest shareholder here. Okay, so that's a quick company's profile. Now let's take a look at the company's performance. Let's start from its EPS history. As usual, so here I uploaded earning per share or EPS for the last uh, 13 years, yeah, since 2009. I also added the horizontal green dash line as a guide to zero level. Earning below this line indicates that the company is recording a loss for that particular year. Okay, at a glance, let's look at the screen here. At a glance, it seems to me this company is really a tough company in tough business environment. From the data that I have so far, the company had not recorded any loss for the last 13 year. It had a single dip in 2010 and a prolonged profit decrease from 2014 to 2016. Earning per share then stabilized from 2017 up to 2020 finally increased sharply in 2021, as we can see on the screen. The 2014 to 2016 sorry, decline was attributed by the depressed state of the global oil and gas industries, harsh business environment affecting Singapore's real estate company, strengthening the, of the US dollar with respect to US uh, to Singapore dollars, I mean. The company noted that 2016 or 2016 is a very challenging year. The company chairman reported as the most challenging year in a decade. A revenue and profitability dropped further across all their business units. Their energy and related engineering division dropped most to SGD 9.1 million profit. Their real estate solution division stayed comparable to the previous year. Their geospatial Technology division dropped 12% to 10.9 million. Overall, profit had dropped 13%. Over that period, the company water business profitability has been continuously declining, which was finally divested in 2021. Their 2021 result is really impressive. Overall, boasted Singapore had declining revenue in their 2021 financial year. However, their net profit set a new record high, surpassing 100 million mark. In this case here, almost 25 cents per share. So that seems uh, to be a super improvement in the company's efficiency. Closing down their mini power plant business and selling off water business could be contributed as one off earning boost this year. Okay, that's all about Boosted Singapore profitability. Now let's take a look at their dividend payout. To see the sensibility of dividend payout, so here I plotted three layers of information. The first one is the dividend payout from 2008, which are plotted as red round markers connected by a thick red line, as we can see on the screen. On each of the points, I have annotated with two numbers. The number above, above the markers are dividend payouts in Singapore dollars, and the ones below are the payout ratios to the respective year's earning per share. As a comparison to the earning here, I plotted back the EPS or earning per share as a thinner line with the same color, red. Okay, at a glance, I can see that both at Singapore had, has a prudent dividend payout policy. It distributed between 23 to 58, around 58% of the earning as dividend. I like that they keep a significant amount of their profit during good times as safety for market crisis. This is particularly obvious from 2010 to 2013, where the earning increased, but the dividend payout is relatively the same. Furthermore, the sharp earnings spike in 2021 was not followed by over the top dividend distribution, which is good. But my next question is whether my hunch above is really true, whether the company might increase their cash tag over these 13 years of operation as a result of the uh, percentage of the uh, dividend, yeah, dividend payout, I mean, yeah. 
Okay, to see that, let's take a look at their cash and liability position. Okay, so to do that, I have added uh, the company's cash and current liabilities. These light purple bars on the screen are the company's cash with the amount stated on the right hand axis. And the gray ones are the company's current liability. Current liability is my first choice for department that require cash. Current liability could cripple the company's operation as it need to be settled in less than a year. What I want to see is that the cash reserve is higher than the current liabilities. So uh, let's look at the screen, yeah? What we can see here, the, the most, most of the time, most of Singapore is short on cash, except then in 2021. From 2012 to 2020, the current liability is always higher than their cash position. In general, I'm not comfortable with this high leverage company. Furthermore, Boasted Singapore is not a startup company, so I kind of expect it to be less leveraged. On the other hand, it survived several market crises, so there are more things that I may not yet to understand about highly leveraged company. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for now and move on to my next indicator, that's the dividend yield. Okay, dividend yields is most of the time I used to gauge the risk versus benefit in investing in a company. So here I plotted the average dividend yield per year as the round markers. At each markers, I placed error bar, which represents the range of yields over that year. The variation in a year is caused by the volatility level of the share price. The yield increase if the share price decreased and vice versa. At the gland, the dividend yield is definitely better than the bank deposit. For the last six years, it gave out an average of 3% dividend yield. Yeah, I think it's quite okay or yeah, even pretty okay. Yeah. Okay, this year yield at some point even almost reached 7.5%, which might be contributed by the share price dip. But the next question from me from here is that will this yield justify for the risk? To provide further justification, let's take a look at the market valuation. Okay, to see boasted Singapore market valuation, I here uploaded four layers of information, which are the first one is the price, which represent market valuation of the company. It is also the easiest information that I can obtain, but price alone sometimes is leading for the value of the company. So I'll include some fundamental indicators to help you to decide. The second layer of information is the 10 times earning multiply, which here I plotted as a dash green line. 10 times earning multiply can be considered as the price where price to earning, that is the P ratio, is 10. For me, I consider 10 times earning multiply has two purposes. The first one is indicates the, where I expect that I have higher chance to break even within 10 years. You could plot five times earning multiply if your investment horizon is five years. Second, as a consequence for the first reason, I'll consider share price above 10 times earning multiply to be expensive. The third layer of information is 15 times earning multiply. With the same principle as the 10 times earning multiply, price above this indicator will be deemed as expensive. Here I plotted the 15 times earning multiply as the dash yellow line, just like the traffic line. The fourth layer of information is the 20 times earning multiply. Here I plotted as a dash red line. I will consider the share price to be super expensive if it ever crossed this line. Okay, so now let's see what's going on with this company's share price. For the last five years, that is from 2016 to 2020, yeah, Boston Singapore seems to follow the 10 times earning multiply. Similarly, some kind of confidence seems to appear in mid 2020 and early 2021, where it reported earning increase. But now if the 10 times earning multiply support is true, it could be the share price should increase significantly with increase in earnings, particularly if earning level is more than 20 cents per share. Can be sustained, yeah, if that can be sustained. However, the price dropped again uh, in late 2021, which seemed that the market is not uh, doesn't have that confident, that high confidence that the EPS will be sustained for the future financial year. The non-sustained high EPS seems to be supported by the contribution of one of item, which will not happen again. Okay, so the next question is what's the reasonable price for Boasted Singapore? 
for this company. Okay, to figure that out here, I added a notation to the earnings multiply. At the same time, I also added five times earnings multiply. Because it seems that prior to 2016 or 2016, the support level is at five times earnings multiply. Since it's pretty old company and it's not an aggressive growing company, the reasonable price seemed to be less than $1.2 uh, per share. As of the making of this video, the company had just executed about 1 million share buybacks at a price of 97 cents per share on 26th of November 2021. So it seems that the company itself feel that they are currently undervalued. Okay, now we arrive at the conclusion. Yes, we can see on the screen, it is an old company that constantly transforms itself to stay relevant. Okay, from my current analysis, I don't feel uh, comfortable to make any position in this company, considering it's somehow leverage operation. Though it seemed to be a crisis resilient company, that it survived multiple financial crises as well as pandemic, and the dividend yield seems to be quite tempting. I might change my opinion when I understand uh, its operation more. Okay, so that's all for today. Please consider to subscribe because it means a lot for a beginning YouTuber like me. If you have any comments or input, do not hesitate to put in comment section. It'll probably help me to get more perspective and learn more. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you and goodbye.